Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video, and I've got a spicy one for you in store today. An infinite life gain combo deck featuring Ill-Tempered Loner, a 4-mana 3-3 human werewolf, saying when it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target. We can also pump it up for 1 and a red, and if it switches to knight becomes a 4-4 with an even better ability, as it now applies to any permanent we control that is dealt damage. So how do we gain infinite life with Ill-Tempered Loner? Well, we essentially need three elements. The first one is to give the Loner a lifelink until end of turn, that way if it deals damage with its ability, it will also gain that much life, as lifelink not only applies to combat damage, but also abilities like the one on Ill-Tempered Loner. Then the second step is to make Ill-Tempered Loner indestructible until end of turn, that way we can deal damage with its own ability to itself, gaining life in the process, and thanks to indestructible we can keep him alive, so he can deal infinite damage to himself while gaining infinite life. And then the third element is we need an initial point of damage to kickstart this entire combo. We can rely on opposing combat damage, or we can use our own burn spell if the opponent does not cooperate. And the reason we're revisiting this ill-tempered loner combo deck is thanks to the printing of Take Up the Shield, a 2-mana instant that not only puts a plus 1 counter on a creature, but also gains a lifelink and indestructible until end of turn. So for 2 mana we can instantly set up our combo, and we can maybe even ambush an opposing attacker with our loner, give it indestructible and lifelink until end of turn, and gain infinite life as soon as it's dealt one point of damage. If our opponent doesn't attack into our loner or blocks it, then we can still deal damage with Flame Blast Bolt, deals 2 damage at instant speed, also exiles the creature if it dies, can be useful against Tenacious Underdog, and 2 copies of Sacred Fire, which can also be flashed back out of our graveyard, gaining 2 life in the process. Now, how do we actually win the game? Well, there's two kind of avenues to victory. The first one is you just gain quote-unquote infinite life. Of course, on Arena you're limited to however much life you can gain in the allotted time, so you're not necessarily gaining the life you want, but you can still gain enough to essentially put the game away unless the opponent can maybe mill you out, which can happen if you drew more cards than the opponent, otherwise the life can probably buy you enough time until the opponent draws from an empty library. Of course, that's not the most elegant win condition, which is why we're also playing four copies of Voice of the Blessed, which picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever we gain life, so now all of a sudden we can pick up a counter with Voice of the Blessed every time we go through our combo, which also will result in infinite plus one plus one counters on our voice, and at some point it also gains a flying vigil vigilance and indestructible as soon as it has 10 or more counters on it, so that can help us close out the game instead. Then we've got more redundancy, thanks to two copies of Angel Fire Ignition, a 3-mana sorcery that puts two plus one counters on a creature, giving it Vigilance, Trample, a lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste until end of turn. can also be flashed back for 4 mana, so that's another way to potentially set up our combo, even though it's sorcery speed and a bit more pricey than our Take Up the Shield alternative. And then we've got a whole bunch of looting effects to help us assemble the various combo pieces. Four copies of Thrill of Possibility at 2 mana, discard 1 to draw 2. At 3 mana there's Fable of the Mirror Breaker, great individual card that will also help us loot on the second chapter. And then we also have the full set of Big Score, and this is probably the most important one, because if we cast Big Score on turn 4, it will make 2 treasures in addition to helping us loot. And then on turn 5, if we hit our land drops, we'll have 7 mana total, which is enough for a loner, plus take up the shield, plus a 1 mana Flame Blast Bolt, so that can potentially gain infinite life on turn 5. Then we also have two copies of the Celestus, which can help us make more mana, and also maybe gain a bit of life to synergize with the Voice of the Blessed, and we can also potentially switch between day and night, which can be useful with our ill-tempered loner. And then, since we're not really playing a ton of creatures to the board early, it can be nice to have a catch-up mechanism, which is why we have two copies of Depopulate as our sweeper of choice. And then the mana base also has two copies of Windscarred Crag. Could potentially play all four of them, since they do synergize quite nicely with Voice of the Blessed, as we can potentially gain a life and put a counter on it right away, but it does come into play tapped, which is the big drawback. And then we also have some channel lands with Einganjo and Crucible, which can also come in handy. And then just eight of each basic and four Sundown Pass. So yeah, that's our janky combo deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? 
Got some removal, a thrill. Yeah, we'll keep it. Missing most of our combo pieces, but at least we'll be able to survive any early aggression. So we'll keep up thrill. And a Devastator. It's going to be a 2-2 here. Yeah, we could bolt it. I think I'm fine taking two, and then we might set up Depopulate instead. So either get rid of Bolt or Voice. I'll get rid of Voice. And then now do we Fable? Opponent might spend a removal spell on it. Maybe we get to attack, make a treasure. And then we can maybe postpone, depopulate by another turn. Could also just trade for etching. Depends what our opponent's next play looks like. If they have to use a lightning strike on the shaman, then they don't have one for our loner, so that could still be fine. It's gonna be a sticky fingers for menace. And Kami's Flare deals with our Shaman. Okay. Now, Flame Blast Bolt's actually a pretty clean solution to etching, since that way Sticky Fingers doesn't even trigger. So maybe we don't need to depopulate. And I just get rid of depopulate and a land. Bolt etching, and then we're still taking two from Devastator, but uh, we're digging more towards the remaining combo pieces. Could also big score, discard bolt, and then still bolt, which I also don't mind. So we'll pass for now. In case we need to triple flame blast bolt, Chandra can deal some damage. It's gonna plus, exiling an adversary, which they could play with a treasure. I mean, I could triple Flame Blast Bolts. Feels pretty drastic, and I would rather dig a bit deeper with Big Score. So, yeah. Discard a Bolt, or maybe a land at this point. And deal with Etching. And then we're taking four. My hand's not great, so maybe I should just exile Devastator 2 here. Could also go after Chandra with both bolts. But then we're dying to the creatures. So we'll take two, get a reflection. And hope to find a loner soon. At least we can put a counter on voice. And then we'll pass it back. Chandra pluses. Finding a requisitioner, which they can also blitz, in which case exiling it is good value. And another sticky fingers. All right, I guess now we'll just uh, wait for them to attack and exile the adversary. And then we can finish off Chandra on the way back. Assuming there's no one mana removal here. Another Fable's nice. Okay. Make a Shaman, and then we can copy the Shaman to get an extra treasure. And hang on to the land to discard. Her opponent's got another Devastator, we could be in trouble. Can cast it for at least four, now five. Right, Running Flame kills a voice, and it's actually a spirit, so they get two more damage out of it. And a Stormseeker is gonna hit us for three, down to two. Alright, so we're in danger here of getting burnt out. But there we go, Angel Fire Ignition to the rescue. And I probably just want to cast it twice. So I'll discard Mountain. And then 
Ignition. The Shaman. Hit for four. And then we'll pass it back. And I can copy the Shaman end of turn. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Ignition for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hands acceptable. We've got our two main combo pieces and big score to generate more mana so we can maybe combo off on the following turn. Don't have any cheap interaction, so if our opponent's on an aggressive deck, we could be in trouble. Black red. And no turn two play. Alright, for now we're happy just hitting our land drops and setting up our big score. Fable on three. No play for now, sadly. Serpun gets to untap and make a treasure, so... Not in an enviable position. Gotta hope they tap out at some point so we can combo them. Opponent even discarding a lightning strike and a harvester, so their hand must be chock full of removal. Corpse appraiser to draw. Explains why they discarded harvester. Okay. Ideally, we also find a Voice of the Blessed, so we can actually grow a creature with infinite plus one counters, but that might be a bit much to set up here. And our opponent's presenting a lot of damage next turn. What do we discard to big score? Probably just a land. Might have been worth it to cast it before attacks in case we find a Flame Blast Bolt, but Bolt I also need to combo off. All their opponents might cooperate if they have a Lightning Strike. Could also find a Depopulate to wipe the board. So yeah, best case scenario, we play a Loner with Take Up the Shield available, opponent goes for a Lightning Strike. And we combo off. Alright, there's Depopulate, so we can reset the board now. And there's another loner, so... Yeah, probably start with a Depopulate. And then next turn we can uh, try to set up the loner plus take up the shield. So far so good. Another Corpse Appraiser. So our opponent's not running out of action anytime soon. Get to untap and find a Sacred Fire. So that can set up our combo. So we'll play a Loner. Probably just pass in case of an Infernal Grasp. And then we can combo at instant speed. And yeah, there's a lightning strike, so I don't even need to sacred fire now. So our opponent enabled the combo for us. And we even have another take up the shield. Oh no, Rona's Vortex. I guess that gets around it. Okay, I guess we'll uh, hang on to our backup take up the shield then. Alright, so I guess we'll try again next turn. Now our opponent knows what we're maybe trying to accomplish. It is night, which is also helpful. So we'll play another Lunar and pass it back. Opponent's clearly keeping up some interaction since they didn't blitz underdog. Essence scatter. Okay. Do I try again, or do I maybe set up big score 
although it's unclear if I even want to discard anything here. Could play another loner, but then we won't have take up the shield available, and it's also going to switch back to day. So I think we just pass. Opponent does Blitz Underdog now. So that's 6 damage. Could Sacred Fire. Or we could Big Score. If I Big Score now, we could also find a Bolt to Exile the Underdog, although I might want to keep Bolt to combo with Loner, assuming it actually sticks the landing. Or I can just take 6 down to 1 and then have all the combo pieces, assuming no interaction. So three cards in hand, and our opponent's going to keep up their mana. Also found a Voice of the Blessed. So if I play Loner, I don't have the mana to take up the shield and Sacred Fire alongside a Voice. So I guess we'll just play a Loner and cross our fingers. That resolves. And that will pass. Opponent with Maestro's Charm, each opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. Well, I've got a surprise in store for our opponent here. They thought they could burn us out. And then now we want to go to our settings to make this easier. And then we want to uncheck the enable gameplay warnings, and we want to automatically order triggered abilities. Although I guess the triggered abilities is only relevant if you also have a Voice of the Blessed in play. Alright, so we get to gain infinite life here. Opponent piecing together what's going on. Now this doesn't necessarily win us the game, although in theory for at infinite life opponents got 34 cards in library versus our 43, so they would end up drawing from an empty library first. Because of the limitations of arena, we don't actually get to gain infinite life, only as much life as we can in the allotted time. But in theory this would be game over. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's promising. Just missing our loner. And then we can discard Ignition since we have take up the shield, which is typically the preferred option. Unless we play a turn to Voice of the Blast, then an Ignition can actually be pretty strong. So, could hang on to Sacred Fire, although. Whichever creature they play here might survive the uh, damage. Although then again, I still have the mana to play Fable on 3. So, should still be able to curve out. Opponent's got nothing. And we'll play Fable. Probably gets taken out by a Lightning Strike. But we mostly care about the second chapter. Play with Fire instead. So it is possible that the burn deck is going to help us out by initiating the combo with the lightning strike. They've got their own fable. So discard... Maybe... Mountain and tap lands, or just get rid of ignition. And then keep the one life gain land. Which could be relevant. Actually found a voice of the blessed. So now how about Voice plus Sacred Fire the Shaman? So they'll need a 3 damage burn spell to deal with Voice now. And the Ignition also threatens more counters. So this is mostly being a distraction. Put on discarding a Raichu, so they must be digging for a 4th land pretty badly. And did not find one. So their hands probably has at least one or two four drops. 
and voice able to play defense. So it should be safe to flashback Ignition here. And then Krag also represents an extra counter. So we'll go for it. And then next turn we can even flash back a Sacred Fire. Voice gaining flying up to a 7-7 seven, seven now. So that's just a two-turn clock. Who needs a loner anyways? A Raiju, but opponents tapped out so we can easily block it. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Got all the combo pieces rolled up here. Facing a battle fly swarm, which we could bolt if needed. Although, prefer to keep this for the combo. So I'll take the one. And then might as well gain one life. Could have also kept this until after we play Voice of the Blessed. Probably not going to be super relevant against Mono Black, which can destroy our creatures regardless. Maybe if they have a cut down and a 3 3, cannot be taken out as opposed to a 2 2. So our opponent off to a slow start. We can a big score, maybe discarding Ignition. Opponent stuck on two as well. And yeah, if they tap out next turn, we could gain infinite life and a Shadow Prophecy to draw one. Pretty sad in a mono black deck. So yeah, we have the combo all rolled up. Untap. Play Loner, and we'll just do this now. And that's infinite life. Okay, and then with infinite life we've got a lot of time to figure out a way to actually kill the opponents. We have 46 in library, they have 64, so they're prepared to outlast us with uh, cards and library. But we'll have a very nice uh, life total advantage, so we should have all the time we need to set up a second combo. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Got double loner. Yeah, this seems fine, just missing a way to give them indestructible. And, uh, Big score will help us make more mana, so we can potentially cast everything in the same turn. Up against a Naya colored deck. Can Sacred Fire if needed. Baird. It's not a bad target for it. We'll need to find another burn spell to kickstart our combo. And then one loner we could maybe discard. Or we could just play one on turn four and then see what happens to it. Put in maybe a tokens deck, beast caller, or just kind of an aggressive deck. Yeah, I'll play a loner here. Can maybe trade off, but just uh, a decent blocker against creature decks. And if they want to remove it, it's going to be tricky if they deal damage to it. Another Baird. Beast Caller 4 4, now a 5 5. So I could trade Loner for Beast Caller essentially. Don't know if that's worth it. A Voice of the Blessed can grow with a Sacred Fire. 
I think the plan's still too big score, but we can let it switch to knight, even though that means missing a land drop. And a rabble rousing, I see. His opponent wants to go wide. Yeah, um, probably have to sacred fire now. Let them use hideaway first. And then we can big score plus sacred fire to kill Baird. But maybe see what we find off uh, big score first. All right, we have take up the shield. So we have everything we need for the infinite combo, including Voice of the Blessed to grow an infinitely large creature. So unless the card they find of Rabble Rousing wins the opponent the game here, which, you know, very well could be the case with something like the uh, Naya Lord, then we should be good to go. So I'll let them attack and have their fun. And a strangle. Alright, strangle's fine. Opponent doesn't cast it. So we can block Baird here. And actually could have gained infinite life by going for take up the shield right now. But then we wouldn't have been able to uh, necessarily make an infinitely large voice, which is the goal here. So play voice. Take up the shields. Avenger and Sacred Fire. And now we get infinite voice triggers. So that strangle should not be a problem. And voice eventually also gaining indestructible. Now we are facing a rabble rousing, so not sure how much life we want to gain to feel safe. But at least want a 20 powered voice of the blasts. And then Avenger also gets to attack. Let's get to 100 life, just to feel a little bit safer. It used to be that when uh, comboing off here, eventually the timer starts running, but in my experience so far, you can basically gain as much life as you want, which is maybe not the best idea because you can kind of take your opponent hostage in a way, which is probably not the intended outcome. Get a nice 100. We'll gain some more of the final trigger, killing a token. And then Avenger attacks. For another 5. Okay, got a 49 49 Voice of the Blessed with. Flying, Vigilance, Indestructible. Opponent actually had Jetmir in hand, so that can pump their entire team. But uh, we know there's a Strangle underneath the Rabble Rousing, which is not going to save them. So yeah, opponent got to have their fun, we got to have ours. Everyone's happy. And Voice of the Blast can cross the finish line.
Yeah, opponent got us to 59, so good thing we gained all that life. Since they dealt over uh, 50 damage here. But now we can attack for the win. We've got to gain that one extra life here to get up to 50. Nice round number. And attack. Awesome. So that's the combo, including Voice of the Blast for infinite damage. Alright, so we got to see our Red White Loner combo deck in action. I definitely would not recommend this for ranked ladder, as you're probably just going to waste everyone's time, including your own, as you're probably not going to win too many games in the process, facing all those mono black decks with a ton of instant speed removal. But it uh, can be fun to just try out once in a while, just to see the big numbers. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.